funny, people often ask me, what do you even do? Are you a developer, just a YouTuber? How do you make a living? Well, I love software development. Since the day I wrote my first code, it was something I had to do. And I actually told my whole story in another video, so check that out if you haven't heard it, I'll put a link to it above. But in learning to code and becoming a programmer, I also had the desire to document my journey, my learning, my job changes, creating tutorials, whatever. It was a parallel interest of mine to not only code, but create content. So for me, coding at a desk all day wasn't enough. Sure, the paycheck was enough, the stability was enough, the stimulation was enough, but I was always restless in that I felt this ability within me being suppressed that I also needed to fulfill. And it was the need to be creative in creating content. And this eventually led me to a developer relations role. Here, I could code projects one day and be creating a YouTube video the next day and at a conference the next week in another country. This, to me, was the best of both worlds. It was lavish. But lavish never really ever equals fulfillment. But the problem in all of this at the end of the day is that I'm still creating content for someone else. Of course, creating YouTube videos is also for someone else to watch, but I'm not creating it to benefit another business or to primarily promote someone else's product. And that's what I was doing as a DevRel. Let me tell you about this company. Let me tell you why you need the product. Let me teach you how to use it. And my efforts were all going into that. And I came to wonder why those same efforts couldn't instead go into my own product or brand or material. And then I read a book by John Sanmez. Actually, I was rereading it at the time as I had read this years before, but it was called Soft Skills, The Software Developer's Life Manual. And there's a chapter in it called Treat Your Career Like a Business. And the gist of it is that you are the business. Your employer is actually a customer in your business of developing software or creating content or coaching people, whatever. It's a radical shift of the mindset from the past way of thinking up to a modern new economic mindset. In the past, you were an employee of your employer, which is actually a single point of failure as many of us are now coming to grips with. And something lit up inside of me reading this. I realized that I was a business. I was a content creator who loved programming. And one role of my business was performing DevRel services for my customer, my employer, full time. But my business was bigger than that. I was a content creator who loved programming. And one role of my business was performing DevRel services for my customer, my employer, full time. I also had a YouTube channel and a wonderful audience there. So another role of my business was creating content around programming for the world. And my business became known as Travis Media. And I was open for more customers. And brands started reaching out to sponsor my content and they also became customers of my business. And at this point, you quickly realize you can only handle so many customers at one time. So I chose then to end services with my main customer or employer who hired out my DevRel skills. And as a result, I had some free time to make more content and to learn new technology to teach to the world. And as this book I just mentioned says, switch your mindset from that of an indentured servant to that of a business person who is running their own business. Just having this mindset at the start will change the way you think about your career and cause you to be mindful and present in the active management of it. So now I get called a fake developer. I get called a grifter just because I'm not coding 24 seven and I make an income online. Forbid anyone do that, right? But the truth is, I just expanded my career possibilities and am mindful and present in the active management of this as a business. And if I take a job down the road, I'll add them on as a customer of mine. And to some people, a 40 hour a week programming job is enough. They love it. They love the stability it gives and the good pay. That's 100% okay. Many people are happy with this and I'm very happy for you, but to other people, it's just not enough. And they live with this ongoing urge, this need to do something else in addition to that. To which I say, there has never been a better time in history to capitalize on this. And the people that push back on this idea or leave snarky comments below are the very ones that could be jobless tomorrow. And this creator economy is predicted to grow to a $480 billion industry by 2027 and a $528 billion industry by 2030. So if you adopt this yourself as a business mindset and you actively manage it, then if you got let go by your job tomorrow, you wouldn't be in such a panic. In fact, you would just be ending the relationship with one of your customers of your business. 
Sure, you may take a hit, but you've prepared for this day by having other customers and by having savings. And now this frees up time to put more into this other customer or to acquire new ones. So I still get to code, yes. I build side projects like my community website and I teach coding concepts there as well. I get to learn new tech and teach it on YouTube. I get to create weekly tech newsletters on the latest programming trends, AI, and the economy. And by the way, this newsletter is golden. It's literally the very newsletter I would want to read over the many other ones out there that are too long, too shallow, or not as interesting. If you haven't subscribed to it, the link is below, or just go to travis.media slash newsletter to sign up. They go out every Tuesday. But sure, it's not being in the trenches. Sure, some will say that I can't even use the title of developer anymore. To which I respond, I don't care. I just turned 43 and labels, they don't matter much to me anymore. It's about evolving yourself in a changing industry. You know, the one major shift that happened to me before I went full time on this and the turning point for me, and this may sound silly, but I was walking one morning, which I do every morning, and I noticed this guy on his tractor in the field beside me. We live on this pizza slice in between three farms. And I had like 20 minutes left before I had to be in my first meeting of the day. And I thought to myself at that moment, man, I wish all I had to do today was drive that tractor. And what I meant by this is that I was envious of this guy because he got to call the shots for his day. He didn't have to report to someone. He didn't have to be somewhere at a certain time. He just got to enjoy the day bailing hay. And at that moment, I wanted that. And eventually I had that, so I took it. And I want to say that all of us have some unique value proposition to share with others. Think about all the years you've put into whatever you do. It's a business. You've educated yourself over the years and have not only that education to share, but real world experience or a unique living situation or lifestyle or something that edifies others in some way. For example, if I was 15 years a recruiter and I knew the ins and outs of job markets, what employees are looking for, how to create a winning resume and all of that expertise, I would completely add the world as a customer of my business of recruiting software developers. And what would that look like? Well, here's a guy I came across today that's doing just that. It looks like a YouTube channel with video after video of his expertise as a real life recruiter, 40 million views and a website, a home base where he runs his business of offering career coaching, interview guidance, resume building and succeeding on LinkedIn. I don't really know anything about this guy. Perhaps he's still a recruiter, but he has expanded his business greatly such that he has many customers. His recruiter job became a recruiter brand, his recruiter brand. And think about somebody like the Primogen. We all know him. That's his business, not Netflix. He is the business. That's why he can now do this full time. And it really takes two things, time and consistency. Showing up on YouTube once a week or on Twitter twice a day or on Instagram day in and day out. And if you're on these sites anyway, stop scrolling and start creating. Approach it as a business, not as a place to share your random thoughts. And with time and consistency, you will build some sort of audience and you'll find your voice and you'll begin to see that unique proposition that you have that others like about you or find valuable from you. And over time, you may just find that you can shift to the right or to the left in your career, especially if you're young. And most importantly, you won't be left in the hole when your employer calls you in for an emergency meeting. So what do I do? I'm a husband a dad of four who's in the business of creating content around software development and the life it entails. And I thank you dearly for supporting me over the years. And I look forward to supporting you as well as you thrive in the years to come. You are the business. You have gained knowledge over the years that the world is waiting for. You have a personality that the world craves. You have something to show off, even if your employer doesn't think so. I'm looking forward to seeing it.